Let me tell you, because I live in South Texas and I have watched people from Chicago and other places come in and try and pretend like they are one of us. And they buy a pair of boots and they can't walk correctly. They sound like they just stepped off the set of Dallas from a long time ago. And we know that they are not from here. They are not one of us. They try real hard, but what they do is they offend because they, are, they look like they're mocking the people that they are before. You are what you are. You cannot become one of them. Don't try. Just don't try and blend. It's not going to work. But by the same token, you don't want to offend people. I, coming up here to Chicago, would be very leery of making any reference to the Chicago Cubs and their inability to get to the World Series. Just wouldn't do it at all. Even though I could say, I'm from Houston, Texas, and I'm here to tell you, going to the World Series is not that big a deal. It's over before you know it, and you never win. I wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it because I do not know what it means up here. You have to be careful of the local sensitivities, and your local council will help you. The truth is, you just be true to yourself and avoid trying to butter up or make reference to them in ways you think are helpful. You can't blend. Don't, don't try and do it. Just don't offend them. Every one of us knows that there is someone in the courtroom who tells the judge what to do. There is someone in the courtroom that the judge goes to for advice and counsel. There was someone in the courtroom who tells the judge who's good, who's bad, who's on first, who should be trusted, who is dishonest. You need to find that person. And you need to make certain that that person is your friend. You have no idea the impact that that kind of communication has on the judge. Because in the county where I live, I know that the judges rely on their court staff to tell them what's going on. I'm sure it happens every place, everywhere. And when you're in front of a judge in one of these counties, he is not a judge, he is the king, or she is the queen. You cannot influence these people because they don't answer to you for their position. You don't vote, you don't contribute to their campaigns, you don't persuade the senator who appoints them, you don't have any control over the judge. And so I always make a point of going to the judge and saying, where do you want me to stand? Where do you want me to sit? When do you want me to rise? Even though my local counsel has told me all that I need to know about interrogation of witnesses in that county, I ask the judge because I want him to know I will do whatever he tells me about his courtroom. I will run my case as he wants his courtroom to run. I am from broadcasting. And I am here to tell you that the secret to persuasion is found in the commercials that you watch every day, every night on television. And you need to distill from those commercials the essence of persuasion. And when you go to these little counties, you need to make a point of following it. It is something that you probably do by instinct as a trial lawyer. But when you go someplace where you are outside your comfort zone, you need to do this on purpose. And the rules are very simple. You must be able to distill your case into a simple declarative sentence. You must be able to identify something where the jurors can perceive that their self-interest is at stake and will be satisfied if they find for you. You need to express yourself initially in an incongruous fashion, something that no one expects. You need to have confidence in your position that they can experience and you need to have empathy 